In this video today, we're going to create a animal skull with horns and a flower inspired by the artist Georgia O'Keeffe. What you're looking at right now is one of Georgia O'Keeffe's works of art, Ram's Head with a Blue Morning Glory from 1938. Uh, this is, um, the artwork is oil on canvas and this is a reproduction of it that I purchased when I went to the Georgia O'Keeffe Museum in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So what we're going to do is you're going to actually grab, uh, we're not going to do the ram's head, we're going to do the cow's skull just because it's easier. If you have your heart set on doing the ram's head um, or the ram skull, I should say, you can do this, but I'm going to uh, keep it relatively simple. And uh, the important part of this project is creating the skull so that it is symmetrical. So when I say symmetry, I mean if you were to divide a line down the middle of the skull, uh, whatever's happening on this side is exactly the same on this side, but it's a mirror image. So uh, that's a principle of design called symmetry, okay? So what we're gonna do to create the symmetry is we're gonna draw out only half of the skull. So you're gonna grab a piece of paper and it's preferable to use a piece of cardstock, something a little thicker. You can cut out a cereal box, this works great too. And you want it to be about eight and a half by 11 inches, a regular size paper, right? You know, like computer paper or drawing paper is about that size, right? And you're going to fold it in half. All right. And we're only, like I said, we're only going to draw half of the skull. And then we're going to cut it out. So I'm going to fold this in half. Oh, this is really thick. Okay. Super thick. A little too thick. Okay, well, that's good enough. All right. And uh, then I'm going to draw half of this. All right, so let's picture it just by folding this in half. This is going to help us. All right, that's approximately half. Okay, so basically this is what I'm going to draw, is just half. Now I'm going to break this down. I'm going to start with the outline of the skull, and I'm going to keep it simple, and then I'll add the details. So you're going to want to kind of go straight across, right? And uh, I'll worry about the... Um, this part later come down and I would say it's kind of like an oval so remember when we did the um, the portraits and the skulls for Dia de los Muertos we started with an, a basic half of an oval right now we can go back and create all these curves of the skull so here it goes in a little right and goes out, goes in, and then comes down like that. Okay, now we can't see the full skull because the, the rose is there, right? But you can see that it does get narrower. So actually what I need to do, I'm seeing that here, is I need to make this even narrower since this is the cow skull, okay? And I'm going to make it longer. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to get some, some bumps in there to give it that bony effect, right? Now, if you're going to be doing the ram's skull, I think it is wider. But uh, I do like all these little details. Okay, so we have that. And now we can draw out the horn. And it's about across, right? And so it's a curve, right? And then you draw another curve underneath and then they come together, okay? You really wanna use the, the width of your paper. Okay, so I'm not gonna add any detail right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna grab my scissors and I'm gonna cut this out, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to grab your scissors and you're gonna to wanna to cut it out. Okay. 
So when I open it up, then I have a perfectly symmetrical skull. That's really cool, right? So now I can go and I can add some details. And um, George O'Keefe went out into the desert and she would find all these skulls uh, lying around. And obviously they deteriorate, deteriorate differently on each side. And, um, you know, that's just what happens over time. They're out in the sun. You can see that here as well. So one side has less bone left than this other side, okay? So when you draw out the details in the skull that you're doing, you might wanna make it asymmetrical, okay? So it's not exactly the same on both sides, right? There's balance, but it's asymmetrical balance, okay? Here, it's more symmetrical. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go in there and um, kind of add details, all right? I know that I wanna probably cut out some of this, so what I'm gonna do is kind of draw this. It's kind of random, but I'm gonna draw it kind of like that. Just make it wiggly, that's the beauty of this, is you can just make it look kind of organic. Okay, and um, I can go back now and I can cut that away. And if it's crooked, that's good. You don't want it to be all perfect. All right. And then when I open it up, I get the idea of that skull right there. Okay, I could do more. Like here, I could... I could cut out some more if I wanted to, right? Um, I could even do a little bit here on the eye if I wanted. I could kind of make a an oval right up at the edge. This is a little more challenging to cut out, but you can just cut through your stencil. It doesn't matter because we're just using this to um, create that symmetry. Okay, all right, now, so I cut that out and then I open it up and I have, as you can see, I have the openings for the eyes, all right. Okay, so this is looking good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my paper and now you have choices. I'm gonna do this on my watercolor paper if you don't have any more watercolor paper, you can do this in your sketchbook. If you don't have any paper in your sketchbook anymore or you don't have a sketchbook, just do this on a regular piece of paper, right? Preferably without lines. So now I'm gonna take my template that I made and I'm gonna outline it. Or if you wanna call it a stencil, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and Trace it, okay, and um, you can see that it it does make it easier to trace this if the paper is thicker. That's why. I, if you have a cereal box, you should use it. Or maybe a piece of cardboard. Oh, that might be a little too thick. So now I'm tracing all of these lines. Tracing the ovals. Okay. And there you can see I have my, I'll press it a little harder so you can see that better. I've got the outline of my cow skull, okay? All right. I'm gonna bring that up a little. I'm just trying to make it a little more interesting. You could add nostrils. If you wanna add more detail, you can always go online and type in on Google images or drawings of, this is a cow skull, okay? Um, Georgia O'Keeffe made 
painted horse skulls, ram skulls, whatever she found in the desert, she painted it. And she found a lot of skulls in the desert. So I'm just going to kind of erase this a little. So you don't have to make yours exactly like mine. Okay. And in fact, if you want to have some of it chip away, make it more interesting on one side, do that. All right. Um, okay. So we have our outline. Okay. So let's talk about how are we going to add color and detail to this? We need some detail. This is kind of boring, right? And if you look at, um, if you look at, this is a black and this black and white printout of George O'Keefe. You see, there's some shading in there. This um, was oil on canvas, and she painted it with white, and then she added a little bit of gray in there to create that shading. Okay, I do want to have a flower in this, so you can draw any flower you want. You might want to go back and do that rose that we did, or do a sunflower. I'm going to let you decide what kind of flower you want to do. Uh, that is your decision. All right. So I think I'm going to do a rose and you could do one or two. I'm going to do a big rose and I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm going to put it right here. Okay. So remember uh, when I did those roses, I simplified them. I just did little curved lines. Okay. And I just kept getting uh, bigger and bigger with them. Okay, and then I'm going to do a leaf. Okay, so let's talk about adding color. All right, so if you have watercolor pencils, you can use them, or you use regular pencils. Either way, you're going to create a little bit of shading, and it's very straightforward. There's not a lot going on, right? I have my black watercolor pencil, or you use your black pencil, or you use a regular pencil, okay? But I want to see some detail in here, okay? Super important. You want to create some shading. All right, I like this one because you can see that, all that detail of shading a lot more, all right? And you even want to add a little bit of shading in your horns, okay? You don't really see it so much in this uh, black and white copy, but there is some. And you can easily just create a little bit of shading at the edge, okay? And we're going to keep it pretty simple. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add a little bit kind of, of using the side of my pencil. All right. Um, I'm going to actually kind of make this dark or partially dark. Uh, on this side, I think I'm going to make it darker, so I'm going to add a little more shading on this side. So I'm just really going up against the edge and lightly adding a little bit of the black, okay? And be careful, you might end up smudging your paper. If that happens, you know, you can always lay paper down like this and then shade that way. You won't smear it with your hand, right? And I definitely want to um, make this darker as well in here. I want some contrast. I'm not going to go all the way in. I'm just going to do some partial. Okay, and I'm going to add a little more of that there. Alrighty, so I'm keeping it pretty straightforward here. Okay. All right, so my flower, I'm gonna turn my flower, I'm gonna turn it this way. So I'm gonna grab my um, my red and my purple and 
I'm sorry, my red violet and my purple. So, you know, whatever color you want to do your rose is fine by me. I don't care. But I'm going to go in there. I'm going to outline it. Add a little bit of shading. Okay. So I'll just go in there and outline it. And shade that a little. Remember, use the side of your pencil. Okay. Now, if you're lucky enough to have oil pastels, you could also do this in oil pastel. The only problem with oil pastel is that the pastels are quite thick, right? Um, these are oil pastels, right? They'll say oil pastel on them. And you could also do a little bit of shading with that, especially if you are just using regular paper and not watercolor paper. But what's cool about oil pastels is you can actually draw with them and then drop some water on them and create some really cool effects. So if you have them, you might want to experiment with them. I know a few of you have them. Now I'm going to go back and add a little bit of um, the red violet in there. Sorry, my cat wanted to join me. So I'm not going to fill it in all the way, right, because I want to have a little bit of white. But notice how I'm blending that red violet over the purple or the violet. Okay. And remember, if you don't want to do these colors, you can do red with pink if you want, blue, blue with violet. It's nice to have two colors. All right, and then put a little bit in there. Okay, so then I have to do my leaf. And um, I don't, I'm gonna erase this. I don't wanna see the pencil lines. So I'm just gonna kinda go over it with my green watercolor pencil. Add the veins. And add a little bit of shading. And if you have a darker green, you can go in there and add a little bit of the darker green. Okay, so now I'm done. It's pretty straightforward, and now I'm going to grab my brush. If you're doing the, if you are doing watercolor, grab your brush. And um, here's my cat again. He's gonna join us. Okay. There's no point. I can't get rid of him. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. This is not gonna work. All right. As cute as you are, dude, you cannot be here. All right. Okay, well, I'll try to do this, but now I just dropped a little bit. Of, I dropped my um, brush in the water, and now I'm just going to drop it on what I drew out with the watercolor and um, make it turn into the watercolor. Okay, so I want to leave a little bit of white in there. I'm gonna go back and clean up my brush in a minute. So I'm basically just loosening up that pigment.
Okay, so I'm gonna clean my brush in the water. Get rid of all the excess water now and all that excess pigment. And now I can go back and just kind of dab in there and I'm creating a lighter value where the wipe is, okay? And you can always leave a little bit of the white showing if you want. I, I don't want to mess this up. I'm going to leave it like this. I'll probably do another layer at one point. Uh, and then I'll show you in class. And then I'm going to start with oh, the lighter green and work my way down into the darker green for the leaf. All right, and I get that nice differentiation of value again. Okay, and now, clean my brush again, and now I'm just gonna take my brush and just go over all that shading that I made with my watercolor pencil. Okay. And so I did that here. I'm gonna get rid of the excess pigment in my water. And then just gently bring that down a little. It'll be a lighter gray, okay? It'll automatically create a little bit of that shading that we want to make it look more three-dimensional, okay? All right, that looks really good. And I'm just gonna move my paper and hopefully my cat's not gonna smear this. Goodness gracious, dude, you gotta move a little. You're making it really hard for me here. Okay, he can stay over there. All right, now hopefully he's not gonna keep moving towards me. So I'm just gonna do the same everywhere else, right? Go over all that shading that I did. Okay, get rid of the excess pigment. And then I'm getting rid of that excess pigment and then just dabbing it away. And now I'm going to just gently bring a little bit of that gray down. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do a little more here. Okay, so I'm gonna continue Dissolving that pigment with water. Okay, so I don't want to go over here because I got a lot of pigment on my brush, right? So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all that pigment in my water. Get rid of all the excess water at the edge. And now I can go back and just lightly spread that out. If I don't clean my brush, then it's gonna be really dark. We're kind of trying to create that soft shading, okay? And it'll kind of bleed in there and it'll get lighter and lighter as it goes more to the left. That's what I'm going for. All right, I'm gonna clean my brush again, get rid of all the excess water, and do the same thing here. Just kind of spread it out a little. Oop, I think it dried already. Okay, that's okay. I can pick up a little bit of pigment again and bring it across. And see how it just naturally is gonna create that shadow. All right. Okay. All right, and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So yeah, I wanted it darker on that side, okay.
All right, get rid of that excess pigment, dab it away. And then I can also kind of, on this side, spread that out a little, okay? Until it gets lighter and lighter in there. All right, now this is a really good start. You know, if you look at Georgia O'Keeffe's work, she's got um, some shadows. She's creating shadows in her work. Here you can see that as well. If you if you want to do something like that, you can. All right. Um, she's got that here as well. You see that? Just makes it look a little more interesting. Now, background is up to you. I don't know what you want to do for your background. Um, I think it looks really nice to add a little bit of that shading in there. So I'm going to do that. And, um, you know, I can basically just take my black um, watercolor and do that. Now, remember, you don't want a lot. Okay, and if you don't want to do, or if you don't have any more watercolor left, you can just do this with a black pencil or a regular pencil and create kind of a a little bit of shading, right, as you see here, okay? So I'm just going to go in here and um, go up against this. and um, create a little bit of shading. See, it's not really dark, right? It's, it's gray. And you don't need a lot of paint on your brush. So I'm just gonna go all the way down until I get to the edge of it. And then bring it into the bottom of the skull, okay? So now I have a little bit of a shading or a shadow. All right, I think that looks interesting. And, um, I'm not quite sure what she did here. She did partitions of like panels almost. Okay. And then it went, remember you saw how some of her, um, some of her um, skulls were on trees, which is really cool if you want to do that. All right. Um, I think I might do that. So this is all optional. I'm just playing around and adding a little more detail. This is going to be like a, a tree, right? Now, I would have liked to have done this with watercolor pencil. I think it would look really good. Um, but I can always go back when this is dry and uh, add a little bit of watercolor pencil to create more texture, right? For this tree branch, which I probably will. Okay. In fact, can do it right now. All right, I'm going to move this and I'm just going to go in there just like we did with that sunflower and create a little bit of texture. Okay, so you can add so much detail to this depending on where you want to go with it. All right. realizing that this needs to be wider. That's okay, I can make that wider. And just go back and add a little bit of brown in there. Okay, so this is a really good start. I'm probably going to add some more detail to the flower and the leaf. It's kind of boring. Um, you can do whatever you want with your background. You could do a variegated wash if you wanted. You could do the mountains like she did. In one of the paintings in the slideshow, you can see there's a mountain background. Okay. Or you can just leave the background white. 
All right, now uh, remember, if you are out of watercolor paper, you can do this in your sketchbook with the watercolor pencils. And you can just shade. But you can always add water if you want. All right, so I think I'm going to leave it like this. I might add more detail when it dries. All right, see you in class.